Welcome to the Therapeutic Food Solutions Podcast. I'm your host, Mary Mitchell. I'm an integrative nutrition health coach, therapeutic diet expert, and founder of The Road to Living Whole. There are many different diets out there. It's hard to know which one is right for you with your chronic illness and autoimmune disease. In this podcast, I'm going to share with you the foundational pieces every single therapeutic diet out there shares, and also how to use the best one for your particular diagnosis. If you've been looking for a meal planning partner, help navigating the complicated healthcare system, and want to feel better quickly, I'm your girl. Grab your kombucha and notebook. Let's dive in. I've been in the food allergy and intolerance world for about nine years. And in that time, I've met people and have had clients with, you know, over 75 allergies and intolerance, but only a few that have had over 100. But today's special guest is Kathleena, the allergy chef. Kathleena has over 200 food allergies and intolerance, which not knowing about them almost cost her her life. Today, she is alive due to avoidance and she's thriving. I'm excited for her to share her story with us and give those of you who are struggling hope. There is a light at the end of the tunnel and it's not as bad as, as it seems. In fact, it's pretty awesome. Kathleen, thank you so much for joining the podcast today. Thank you for having me. I love that you said um, it's not as bad as you think it is because you know, people, they look at my diagnosis and they think they'd never survive. And I'm like, really, you guys, I promise. Like, because see, here's the thing, getting to neutral, people don't realize nothing tastes as good as neutral feels, period. Like, I mean, don't get me wrong. I've met some people who are like, I really have no business eating X, Y, Z, but I I torture myself every so often to eat it because I just love it. And, you know, the reaction is worth it to me. Like, if that's you, like, cool. But for me, at least, Nothing will ever taste as good as neutral will feel like maybe ice cream, but even then like, no, you know what I mean? Like, and I'm talking homemade, super basic ice cream. I'm not even talking like commercial ice cream here. I'm talking like super clean, basic ice cream where I'm like, "Mm, how much ice cream do I want today? You know, and and that's (laughs) about it. But um, day in, day out, nothing, honestly, it just, it doesn't seem worth it to me. Not only that, but like when you are a a chronically ill person, in my opinion, I think you end up learning so much about food and health and science and medicine. And like, you end up with just all this information floating in your head, like the more research you do. And you come to a point where you realize like, you know what, if this food is causing XYZ to happen, I'm clearly harming myself, right? right? What good am I doing by consuming these foods that clearly don't agree with me? Wouldn't it just be better or easier or whatever, insert word here, to find an alternative, right? And that's really what I'm all about. I am all about, look, I I don't want to worship your diagnosis, right? Like, cool, you have all these allergies or restrictions. Great. Okay, that's fun. But what I really want to do is look at what's safe. And now let's make a million cool things out of it. Because I'll look at someone's safe list and I'm like, oh, did you know you can have tacos? And they're like, what? I can have tacos? And I'm like, yeah, just do da 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 And I'm like, it's going to take some elbow grease, but don't worry. Your tacos are going to be awesome. And they're like, I had no idea I could have a taco. Like, to me, that's my thing. Like, I love opening up people's eyes so that they can see, okay, yeah, I only have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 safe foods, whatever your number is. And then jumping off a cliff with that number and saying, look at all this freedom, right? Like cliff diving and it's exhilarating and, you know, you get all the things and that's my jam. Like I'm all about, you know, people sometimes ask me like, why do you do it? And I'm like, just to prove people wrong. (laughs) What? I go, yeah, like, believe it or not. I know this sounds terrible to say out loud, but I love proving people wrong. I love shoving in the world's face and saying, you said we couldn't have it. Guess what? I just proved you wrong. We can have it. It's here. I love that. That's actually my mission as well. So our mission is the same. It's just to show people the freedom in enjoying the foods that love you back and don't tear you down. Yes. And like you you focus on the things you can't have to the point that you forget all the things you can have. And once you learn how to cook, then this whole world opens up to you and it doesn't have to be complicated. In fact, the most simple recipes taste the absolute best. Agreed. Every time. So let's, Let's back up a little bit. Can you share with people, like, what was your life like that led up to you even getting tested for these food allergies and sensitivities? And, you know, because so many people, um, they have these symptoms, they get dismissed, 
right? Or they go through some testing. They're like, well, your test is fine. And so you, it's all in your head. Here's, here's some depression meds, you know, things like that. And you just keep getting sicker. So can you share with us your story that led to your diagnosis? All right. I'll try to keep it into a nut three nutshell, because if I don't, we'll be here for like five hours. Not that you and I would mind, but I don't think the listeners are down for that. Right. Okay. So (laughs) here's the thing. Um, basically I was sick my entire life and no one really knew. Um, I just looked like, I, you know, if you were to do, if you were to cherry pick tests, like blood tests, I look like a very healthy person on paper. Right. But I was super morbidly obese starting at age five. Okay. That's not normal. I cannot stress that enough to people. Morbidly obese children. If you are feeding them a semi-normal diet, I'm not like, okay, if you're feeding them a standard American diet, that actually might be the cause. But if you know what you're feeding your kid and you see your kid getting exercise and your kid is like morbidly obese, that's the body screaming for help, right? Or if your child has massive behavior issues, you could be dealing with an iron deficiency. You could be dealing with food intolerance or actual food allergy that's just causing severe brain inflammation that then triggers these outbursts and meltdowns and things. And we're like, what's wrong with my kid? It's literally, they cannot like function, right? Um, So while I didn't have behavior issues, Um, I had all sorts of physical ailments and I had them like seasonal allergies and contact issues and GI issues. And this went on like my entire life. And then when I was a teenager, I was on a trip and on the way back, I essentially had like a 36 hour mild seizure, right? Nonstop shaking. And to the point where they were ready to reroute, reroute the plane and have like an emergency landing and this whole thing. Like it was like a seriously big deal. So as soon as we land, um, there's like an emergency team there, ambulance, the whole nine. And every specialist, once they arrive at hospital, they're like, what happened? I'm like, I ate the food. I started shaking. Okay. Let's do a brain scan. Next one comes in. What happened? I ate the food. I started shaking. Okay. Let's do a heart scan. You know, next one comes in and this goes on specialist after specialist, not a single freaking doctor said you ate the food and this happened. Let's do a food allergy test. And that to this very day, like the funny thing is, is I don't resent my diagnosis. I don't resent like the weird food I have to eat. I don't resent any of it. The only thing I actually resent is that moment where not a single one of these trained professionals kept hearing this kid say the same thing again and again. It's not like my story changed. I literally just kept saying, I ate the food and this started. I ate the food and this started, you know, well, what did you eat? And I'm, I'm telling them highly allergenic foods and no one said food allergy tests. And the worst part is that, okay, you want to really have your mind blown? The word allergy was not foreign to my chart. And they're all looking at my chart and they're all seeing like this kid has, you know, like grass allergy and this problem and that problem. And not a single one stops to say, let's just run a food allergy test because, you know, this started after she ate the food. Like, oh my goodness. I'm still salty. (laughs) 20 years later, I'm still salty. I just need to say that out loud. I'm so salty over that. That's my only um, gripe. So um, even after that, fast forward five years or even more than that, you know, I'm still really sick. At some point I tried Western medicine and then they were like, well, you know, it's this or it's this here, take these pills. And, you know, my whole thing was like, I don't think it's normal that I weigh this much because I'm not eating enough to be this weight. They're like, yeah, you are, you are. You totally are. Like I was every so, single time, right? I was every so single time that it's, they just totally blame. They're like, you're lying to me. You actually do, but yeah. you know, you think you're healthy. So, you know, here's a nutritionist. Yeah. Um, I wasn't even sent to a nutritionist. Nobody asked for a food journal. Like I was totally dismissed and offered like diabetes medicine, basically, um, that I didn't even really need. And so I kind of just kept getting sicker and sicker and in more pain and in more pain. My inflammation response was off the chart to the point where if you were to just barely touch me, I was in excruciating pain. Um, I opened the front door in the morning and like immediately my face would blow up. Like I was just in so much pain. Okay. And so finally I was at our chiropractor who's also, he's got like a specialty in neurology and he's like a family friend. He's a cool dude. And um, I was just sort of explaining it to him and he says, yeah, that's not normal. Right. So then he's like, I have no idea what's wrong with you, but we're going to figure this out. And um, he ran like a million like standard chiropractic type tests. And he did this and he did that. And we were looking at like just different specialists, like people he knew who might understand what's going on. And that's when he like at the time, gluten was still like in its fad days. Mm -hmm. So he's like, you know, a lot of people eliminate gluten. I wonder what happened if you did. I was like, I mean, I'll give it a try. Like, what have I got to lose? Right. 
but that was the first time I'd ever felt better. And we were like, whoa, we're onto something. Um, and so right around that time, we decided let's just do like every food allergy and food intolerance test, like right now, let's just do them all, all at once. Um, and so, so I, can I interrupt you there? So, yeah, of course. um, there's a variety of food allergy tests. There's the ones where they, they like do, they touch your arm in certain areas. And yeah. if you respond, there's the blood tests, like then there's a skin prick test for the IgE. So when you did all of the tests, what did all of the tests? So look for like? us all was, um, blood, all blood okay. work. And the reason why is because I was also getting sicker and sicker in terms of like multiple chemical sensitivities. And, um, you know, the idea of having me have to go through all that stuff, touching me, it was, it sounded like torture. And we were like, let's try to dial down. The so you torture. did all of it. Right. So it was all done via blood. So we did, um, I think like four different food allergy panels from different companies so that we would have overlapping results just to make sure we got it right. And then we also did the all cat, which I'm sure you're familiar mm -hmm. with. Love the all cat. I think it's so cool. Um, now, obviously you can have false positives and false negatives with any kind of testing, whether it be blood, skin, et cetera. Right. And so in my case, we essentially eliminated everything that, cause I was already starting to food journal as well. If we already knew it was causing a reaction, we assumed that the test was correct. If it was something I hadn't eaten, we did an oral challenge and believe it or not, it was either correct and it was a, it was a like a positive positive or it was incorrect and it was a false negative, right? We weren't getting false positives. positives. We never got false positives. Um, if the test said I couldn't eat it, I could not eat it. And um, if the test said I could eat it, I usually couldn't eat it. Mm. So that's where food elimination diets and that sort of thing started. And then at the same time though, mind you, I'm still getting sicker, right? And um, by this point, I've probably developed a clinical deficiency in like vitamin D. My level was four, right? Out of a hundred. Um, you, you could have not, like, it's just <laughs> mind blowing to me because I've, the lowest I've ever seen it was nine and that person felt horrible. Yeah. Horrible. Or I don't know if that's like a badge of honor or how, how like, <laughs> like I got a four on my test. Right. Um, so there's that. And then of course there was the water issue and right around the same time, they're like, you're going to be dead in 30 days because there's no way to sustain you. Right. There's, there's no food that you're able to eat without being in excruciating pain. At that point, just drinking water was like swallowing razor blades. So it just was, so everybody knows you are allergic to water. I don't think we mentioned that that's yes, like one of the bigger ones, right? Yeah. Um, I am allergic to the processing of water. So what was really interesting is during this whole process, the chiropractor, he was like, you know, this doesn't read like a true water allergy because we were both like researching it. And I was like, I know it's kind of weird because it's almost like it comes and goes. And we were determining that depending on when I took showers, that determined how much pain I was in. So we knew that there was a connection with histamine and, you know, would have been eaten and all these different things. Like, so I was not a standard case. And then, um, the fact that I couldn't drink the water and I was in so much pain, but I wasn't having like hives, you know, every single time water touched me, it was an anomaly. Um, and that's when it just, like I said, it kept going downhill and then I, you know, found safe water eventually. And that was really a game changer. So big shout out to um, Summit Spring. They make raw water. Brian's like the coolest dude you'd ever meet. I gave him a call and told him what was going on. And he sent water in both glass and plastic, just in case I couldn't have the plastic. And um, for the first time I'd had like relief. It was like, oh my goodness, I can drink this water and I'm not in excruciating pain. Like what a trip, you know, like I think people take for granted such basic things like taking a shower or going outside or just having a sip of water. Right. Yeah. Um, I sure don't. <laughs> I mean, when you know how much that can hurt, you're like, Oh, look at how nice this is, you know? Um, so back to the testing, we kind of just were confirming and reconfirming corn. The corn allergy is the most severe, um, out of all the stuff that I deal with. And, um, I'm actually allergic to corn as well. And that has over a yeah. hundred, 110 different names. And right it's in all the foods and it's in everything and medication corn, you can't do corn derivatives either um i can do corn derivatives but oh, it, okay. but the thing is it's like i'm so i'm not anaphylactic in the point that my throat closes or anything but if i have like pure corn yeah. um and i try to avoid their derivatives as much as possible it literally feels like my brain is being crushed by my skull 
like debilitating. And, um, I'm actually IgE allergic to it. I was tested as a baby because I'd failure to thrive. And that was one of them. And I lived really? off of like, I was I mean, li- not that I'm excited. I know I sound excited, but I shouldn't, but <laughs> like, I'm loving the story. Keep going, keep going. Yeah. So great. like I had failure to thrive as a baby, you know, so they did a, a skin prick test and I was allergic to corn. And at the time I would literally only eat cold canned corn. My parents had to put the can in the refrigerator and feed it to me cold. And that's what I would eat. And the doctor was like, well, she's eating and she's 13 pounds at two years old. So please, you know, whatever. And so they did that. They removed it. I switched to cold SpaghettiOs. Um, Ah! and I started gaining weight. So (laughs) cold SpaghettiOs. Hey, you know, my parents were like, she's eating. That's what the doctor told them. Feed her whatever she's willing to eat. We want her to gain weight, you know? So that's, um, you know, but then they're like, oh, she'll grow out of it. I had debilitating migraines, inflammation, cystic acne, like psoriasis, all this stuff. Um, I'm, 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 I haven't gotten food sensitivity tested, but I do know I can't handle corn at all. Dairy, gluten. I can't do soy. And I'm pretty sure I have to limit coconut. So I need to get a food sensitivity panel done. Um, but I feel good. I like, I don't have all the inflammation and stuff that I had. That's the key. Um, like- Cause people ask me, somebody actually was almost like offended that I didn't get a proper celiac disease test. And I was like, well, number one, it's me. Like, this is not your body. I don't know why you're mad at me. Yeah. But number two, it was like, it was obvious. Why am I going to torture myself with more testing if I already know the answer? Right. And it's a pretty invasive test yeah. and it's not always accurate because gluten only affects like 30% of people in the, in their intestines. Most of the time it's actually neurological. So yeah. like, even the test isn't a gold standard. The gold standard is removing it and reintroducing and seeing what happens. Yeah. So that's going back to like, we're testing and then, but the gold standard is always elimination and then reintroduction. Exactly. Every I know time. me, that was, that proved how much food I really could not eat. I mean, so it's like, you know, you get the test results and you're like, whoa. Right. <laughs> and then of course you're doing like loads and loads of research. You're learning way too much about food and you're like, they did what to food, you know? And you're like, fl- like flipping out all the time. Cause you're and it's like, almost like you bought them out. Like you're just like, you're pissed. You're yeah. like, what do I eat? So you're feeling lost yeah. and you're completely overwhelmed because you can only focus on what you can't eat and not what you can. Yeah. You know, well, in my like- case to even trial a food, it had to be truly corn free. So right. that was actually the hardest part because oh, that'd um, be impossible. it was yeah, some foods really were impossible. Some foods I've still never trialed because it's like, you're not getting that corn free. Um, and then there was the time I spent a week begging a farmer in Hawaii to send me a pineapple. That was fun. Um, I mean, it's like there there's so many strange things that you do and you realize just how much stuff you're not supposed to have. And so, um, you know, eliminating things felt great in that I finally felt okay. You know, it was like, um, I could function a little bit, you know, and you know, I, you could touch me again. Cause I mean, before it was like just the tiniest touch and I'm just like, Oh, look, I'm in, you know, excruciating pain. Yeah. So things got better. And for me, as like a total nerd who loves science, I just saw myself as a science experiment at that point. I'm like, okay, here's, I, I had chart, I do the same data. thing. Oh, do you really? <laughs> yeah. Okay, clearly we're going to be spending time together, right? Um, <laughs> because like I had charts upon charts and I was keeping track of all these things. And, you know, I was like, there was a point where um, I was taking my temperature like three times a day because I had read about, you know, temperature fluctuations and this sort of, so, like, I mean, I was all over the place, but I was like, the ultimate science. But that's part of the journey, right? Like people start getting healthy, they get some test results back, they go down the rabbit hole, and then you just start experimenting. What, what works, what doesn't, does this diet that this doctor says guarantees to make me healthy, which it it doesn't. Oh my goodness. (laughs) I'm so tired of one size fits all mentality. It makes me legit angry because you can take two people allergic to the same thing and they will have two different reactions, right? Yeah. And this idea that we're all the same, uh, hello, no, we're not, you right. know, um, and it's about fine, you know, like there's this, there's like foundational principles, right? Like there's the foundational, yes. what is healthy, but then you have to find what works for you. Correct. You know, sure. and then when it comes to food restrictions and allergies and intolerances and like, you're not allergic to everything, but you're intolerant. And some people really dismiss that in the medical world. You know, um, like if you're not swelling, if you're not hives, you know, things like that. And so let's talk about, we were talking about this a little before we started, but you know, let's talk about, well, you know, you went the alternative Eastern medicine, integrative medicine route, and you know, you had gone the allopathic and most people kind of go down this, you, you, you exhaust Western medicine and then you're like, what's left you go to alternative. So what is your perspective on that for our audience? 
So before we jump into that, I want to add one more thing uh-huh. about intolerance because right it's important to say, especially with children. I don't think it's, I think it's so harmful to be dismissive of the idea even of food intolerance. And the reason why is because if your child is constantly suffering, like let's talk about a three-year-old who should be learning and growing and developing, but they're constantly suffering, but hey, it's not hives and they're not vomiting, right? right. Do you really think they can grow and develop cognitively? They can't function. They're in too much pain sometimes to even think straight. And you're trying to teach this kid how to read. It's not going to work. And so then you end up with this um, kind of like downstream domino effect because they just can't function. So it is so important to me to always advocate for like kids and nonverbal people. Like, let's just, let's figure out what actually works for them. Right. Yeah. And then we can determine if there's a root cause and if there's a pathway to reversing and, you know, and and that leads into the alternative integrative medicine. So that's a great segue. So, um, yes, kids, oh my gosh, kids are so complicated because they can't really voice. They don't know what they're feeling. Isn't normal because they're not talking to people. So that's part of why I think I was sick for so long. It's not, we, as a society, we don't say to our children, we tell them like, don't get in a car with strangers. Right. But we don't tell them, Hey, if you feel like you're going to throw up after you eat, you should tell me. Or if you feel like you always have a headache, you should tell me. Like, we don't tell kids that these feelings aren't normal. And so you, like for me, I went through life thinking, feeling like, you know, total trash every day, day in, day out was just normal. You know, it wasn't until years later, I finally realized like, oh, well, this isn't normal, you know? And the funny thing is, is like, I didn't even exhaust Western medicine. You have to know about me. I am a skeptic by nature. Like that is my personality type. I generally just don't believe you. Um, And it's not because I'm trying to be like malicious or rude. It's just, I want to know why, like, why are you telling me to do this? And if you can't give me a good why, if you can't point me in the right direction. And it's not to say that like, I'm like that about every little thing. I mean, common sense totally comes into play, but where like a person's journey is concerned. I think you sort of need to be a skeptic and you need to investigate for yourself. I think you need to read, you know, the journey of a thousand different people and go, oh, those are the 10 that resonate with me. What do those 10 have in common? You know, oh, they all had this one thing. Okay, maybe that's what I have. I think the journey is just that. It's like this journey, right? There's no one size fits all. There's no quick pill. I have yet to meet anyone in my kind of boat that gets out of it in under 10 years. Oh. Do you know what I mean? Like between the, gee, I'm so sick. Gee, what do I do? Where do I start? I'll start with Western then I'll jump to East, then I might get an answer. And now we start working on it. I've never seen anybody do that whole thing in under 10 years. I I, would agree. Like I, you know, as a health coach, I'm kind of the very last, like I'm after the naturopathic doctor. Like I'm like at the very, very end end of the line. I'm the very end of the line. And I love it. I'm really, I really enjoy, you know, giving people options and food and making it easy. Just, you know, just like you, Um, but yeah, you and I, we're the end of the line. Cause like food is like the last resort for some reason, but it's like autoimmune disease. It takes like 10 years and seven doctors to get that diagnosis. There's like these crazy stats about that. You've seen them, haven't you? Oh yeah. Yeah. In fact, I just saw it the other day. Well, I have a, I have a friend who, um, her husband started having vertigo regularly and we already know he can't have gluten, but he didn't want to give it up. So then she was like, can gluten cause vertigo? And I was like, yeah, here's like a million studies. Here's some articles that summarize all the studies. And they were like, mind blown, right? People don't realize just how powerful food is. Yeah, it is so powerful. And um, so, yeah, it's just, we're, we're the end of the line. But so, yeah, it's like you exhaust Western men. Then you, then you have to find the integrative doctor that's willing to listen and right. do the tests and yeah. educate you and help point you in the right direction, trust you to own your journey. I think that's one thing that we, you and I need to stress is like owning your journey. There's no doctor that's going to be able to do the work for you. They can do, give you the tests. They can listen to you. If you say, Hey, I want to do this test. And they go, well, I don't really think that's going to give us the answers, but if you want to, sure. I'm like, that's a great doctor. Right. And you know, then they teach you how to understand the results. Like my biggest thing is just understand why. 
you know, yeah. skeptic. I'm, I'm actually a really gullible person until I just, until I got jaded by Western medicine. And then all of a sudden I was like, Whoa, I want to be an active participant. And now I'm like the worst patient because I'm like, no, I, I want to understand why don't just tell me. What yeah. To do. I, I think don't I've like been, that. <laughs> I, think I, I was literally born a skeptic. I, I probably came out and said, why am I here? <laughs> right. Like that's how skeptical I am about everything. <laughs> like, um, yeah, no, but you know, what's interesting is in like we were talking about before, you're going to have good doctors and bad doctors on both sides of the aisle. I ran into a lot of specialists on the East side who just had these God complexes and were kind of like egomaniacs. Like, I know exactly what's wrong with you. And here's this pill that's going to fix you. And I'm like, you sure about that? Because I'm allergic to half these ingredients. No, no, take the pill. Sure enough, massive allergic reactions. And I'm like, dude, you don't even know what you're doing, you know? And, and that's the thing. Like, I would go to specialist after specialist and each one be like, wow, I've never seen anybody as bad as you. Like, cool. Thanks. I win the gold sticker again. Right. Like for a while, that was what everybody would say to me. I've never seen anybody this bad. Okay. Yeah. My daughter has a heart condition and you can hear her murmur. It's a whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. So like she had to go to the emergency room. She took her toenail off with a rock. And then all of a sudden they listened to her heart. And then all of a sudden there's like 40 people because they, all these people have never heard it. So it's, it's the same, same concept wow. of like, there's this anomaly. And so everybody's like, Whoa. And my yeah. daughter is like super introverted. And she's like, uh, you know, you she's know it's so funny you would say that because, so I have to wear a respirator to leave the house. Right. And, um, I don't know. We were talking about something the other day and I said something like, I'm just so tired of being a zoo animal. Everybody stares. Everybody wants to like know everything. Everybody like, they just want to like put a magnifying glass up to you. And it's like, I'm just so tired of it. So I totally get where she's coming from because when you have these rare conditions, people do, it's like, it's like that 17 car pileup. Everybody looks. <laughs> <laughs> And you can't help yourself. You know, you shouldn't, you know, it's going to slow down traffic and you know, you're not supposed to, but you just got to at least peek. Like you can't help it. Um, yeah. Talking about peeking, give us a peek into what you found helped you navigate eating around your allergies and tolerances. So like you did all this elimination, hmm. right? So like yeah. when it comes to eating, what does that look like for you? I'm guessing you cook at home. I'm guessing you control the ingredients. I'm guessing you control the chemicals you're exposed to. So if for somebody who's like, I just got my test back and I'm sensitive and allergic to 75 or hundred foods, right. You know, cause that's, you're, you're not the norm, but most, there's a lot of people that are still really high up there. What, what does that look like? All right. Hard truth. It wasn't until like probably a month ago when I took some extreme measures that I finally got to have some neutral days. So I'm actually the worst person to ask for a <laughs> personal story, but I can tell you what I do for everybody else. That's perfect. The better Let's That's do fun. that. All right. First and foremost, you make a list, you make a spreadsheet with major food groups. Um, like one of the resources we have on raise is called the four day food rotation. And within that, there's a master food list where we break down foods by category. And we tell you like, you know, seed based things and this and that, whatever. So you make a list and you're going to print out this list and you're going to go through and you're either going to highlight every food you can eat, or you're going to scratch out every food you cannot eat. But basically you need to be left with a list of what you can have. We're not focusing on the cans. We're better than a trash can, right? Cause I we don't want that. The cans. Oh, I love that. I know. Right. I tell that to my kids all the time. I'm like, are you saying a trash can is better than you? Um, and so we're looking at everything you can have from there. We start getting creative, right? You, here's the thing about all these restrictions. As long as you have like some very key foods, people don't realize it, but like, if you can have a few key things, you can basically have the illusion of everything, right? So we need a protein, yep. whatever protein that's going to be whether it be bison, pork, chicken, rabbit, fish, whatever. We just need a protein, okay? Right. With that protein, we can make fake chicken nuggets. We can make deli meat. We can make, um, you know, shredded meat. We can, like, we can make a stew. We can, we can do so much with a protein as long as we have the right tools and the creativity, the elbow grease, and maybe the recipes that we need, right? I mean, you could even do dehydrated stuff for jerkies, okay? Mm -hmm. We just need a protein. 
We can even do bone broths. Even if you only have fish, you can do fish stock. Okay. Mm -hmm. You can, you just need one. That's all we need. Then we need um, some type of fat or oil. Mm -hmm. Right. Because we need to be able to add flavor. We need to be able to add calories, calories etc. Yeah. So we need a fat. You only need one. Okay. If you have two, great. Just one. That's all we really need. And if you just have one protein, guess what? Most proteins, we can have a fat content option. So like if you can have bison, then we can have tallow, right? So there's going to be a fat there if we can get you one protein. Technically, you don't even need fruits and veg, right? right. You can go full carnivore if you had to. It's nice if you could have them though. Like it would be nice. The variety is nice. Definitely. We need salt. You don't need anything else, but we just need salt. And that's flavor. And also you need that for blood pressure and like exactly. en enzymes and yeah. cortisol and all that stuff. But yeah. Now, if we can have more seasonings, black pepper, sea vegetables, maybe some mushrooms, like we can have something else. We can get some herbs in there. Yeah. Like that'd be great. If not, not the end of the world. We'll deal with that later. We'll cross that bridge at another point. Then you need um, either, you need some kind of starch, right? We need something that we can then con convert into something else. If you can have sweet potato, we can actually convert it into a sweet potato flour. If you can have apples, we could technically make apple flour, right? We need a kind of starch, whether it be a starchy vegetable, a starchy fruit, or an actual starch or a pseudo grain. Don't care which, we just need a kind of starch. You give me those, I'm setting your world on fire, right? Um, from here, like, can we have baking soda? Cool, because now we've got cookies. Can we have a sweetener? If we can get a sweetener in there, hot dogs with gravel on top. We are seriously flying with speed under our pants, right? Like, you get me some key ingredients. That's it. Set everything on fire. Like, you're, you're going to live, and you're going to thrive, and you're going to love every minute, right? Because you're going to feel yeah. good. Yeah. And with not, nine, I had nine safe ingredients. And um, I had like cookies, muffins, cake, not that I eat any of that stuff, but I had it, um, you know, smoothies and even made like um, faux lemon meringue pie, like custardy type stuff. So, like, I'm telling you, I lived the good life on nine ingredients, okay? If I can make it work on nine and you're not in the boat I'm in, you're not to that extreme. Trust me when I say this, you have so many options. Like, I so love that. Options. When I create meal plans for my clients, I always focus on the cans. I make them their little spreadsheet so that it's a quick reference for giving to other people. But I'm like, let's just focus on the can because mentally, if you think about what you can have, there are a million yeah. options with I what you can have. Thing. I'm always telling people, stop looking at the can and look at the can. Because what are you really going to do? Go through the grocery store and be like, well, I can't, 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 can't. No, you're going to go straight for the things you can have. And then go home and make something out of it, right? Um, you know, and then again, it's all about, to me, the tools. Because you, you just got to be able to manipulate the food. You know, for people who think they can't, there's that dirty word again, right? <laughs> um, have a lot of textures or different things. You know, it's like, you can take a zucchini and prepare it 6, 10, 20, 30 different ways, right? Easy. Easy. Easily. That's so many different options right there. It gives you the illusion of choice. That's all we're going here for. I'm not saying you're actually going to have real choice. I'm saying you're going to have the illusion of choice. And as long as you have the illusion, I mean, who doesn't love a good magic show? I love a good magic trick, right? Don't you? When I see them do the whole poof, presto, blah, 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 like, you know, and it's actually done <laughs> well, I'm like, bravo. It's the same thing for me. I take, right. your safe, I take your safe list and I'm like, hey, watch this. You want to see a magic trick? <laughs> I can take nothing and turn it into a cookie. Poof, you know, and it's like, hi, you know, that's what I'm here for, you know, and and that's really what it's about. It's, it's just focusing on the can. And when you shift your mindset, I think mindset is more than 50% of the battle. Because if you're always like, man, I can't have, I can't have, I can't have, I can't have, I hate this, I hate this, I hate, like, what are we doing? We are programming ourselves, right? For misery. Let's just totally stop that. Yeah. Let's literally stop that train of thinking and jump on a different train and just be yeah. like, oh, look at what I can have. I can have fake lemonade because I have lemons and I have like apples. So I'll mix apple juice with lemons and have fake lemonade and heat it up. And now I've got tea and, you know, like, let's look at all the cans and go from there. And it, I absolutely love that. We are definitely going to be, you're like my new best friend. I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm always looking for a new bestie. Right? Yeah. I'm just, yeah. Like it's just really 
inspiring, I think. And I'm just super excited because it is, it's just, there are so many options. Like there are so many and options. It doesn't and have to taste bad. I think one no. of the biggest issues. It, it can taste different, but it can yeah. taste good on its own. I feel like that is something that people like, it may not taste like the cookies you're used to, but it's still going to be a delicious cookie. Yeah. So like, if you can let go of the, oh, I'm replacing this, but Hey, like this is good on its own. Like the the world opens up. You've got to manage the mindset. Sometimes I even call memories or call recipes, the memory of like, we've got this one recipe. It's a top eight free soy free chicken chow mein recipe. And I actually tell people up front, it's called the memory of chow mein recipe because you're not eating chow mein. The noodles aren't even the right noodle. You guys but I got you a top eight free version. It's super delicious. The kids said it actually tastes better than the restaurant one. And it's hecka good. And it takes you back to that place of chow mein without quite getting you there. So it's like the memory, but it's still really good. And that's the thing. If you can manage your mindset, you're going to get somewhere. Now, here's one of the biggest tips I love to give people that are in our boat, because I think this is so overlooked for those of you out there who need ice cream, because I am an ice cream fiend and I understand your challenges. I genuinely genuinely understand it. Um, Number one, you need to get an ice cream machine with a compressor built in. They're expensive. They're going to start at about $300. The investment, it's non-negotiable. Okay. If you do the no churn method, you're going to hate your ice cream. (laughs) If you do the, um, now there are a few times when it's okay. Like if you can have bananas and cashews, then you don't need the ice cream machine. But for those who are like in my kind of boat where you don't have anything like that, you're getting the machine because it's going to do the heavy lifting for you. Number two, you need fat. The reason it's called ice cream is because it's creamy, which is fat. It's not called ice milk. It's called ice cream, right? So one of my secret tricks is I use tiger nut oil. Tiger nuts are not nuts. They're actually a tuber root vegetable and you can extract a cold pressed oil from them. It's expensive, but it's worth every penny. And um, I use essentially like a watery fake milk with tiger nut oil. And what do I get? Delicious ice cream because there's fat. Now you have to be careful because if you do too much, you're basically eating cold shortening and it's so gross, but it's also so (laughs) expensive that you'll force yourself to eat it because you're like, I spent $17 on these ingredients. I'm eating up and it's gross. Every bite you're like, oh, this is so gross. What was I thinking? Swallow. Oh, this is so gross. Right. But you eat it anyway, because it's like $17 worth of ingredients. But when you hit those ratio pay dirts, whoo, it's like night and day. You go from ice milk and weird sorbets to ice cream. And you're like, I can live on this. I'm totally fine. Nine ingredients. I'm good. This is good. I'm, I'm, I'm done. Like it's I great. love that. It is all about the tools and it is yeah. being willing to experiment and being willing to what I I'm, I'm air quoting fail until you find the right recipe. But if you can, again, it's that mindset thing of going into this is like, I'm an experiment and I'm going to be willing to try these things. Like again, the whole world opens yeah. up. Well, and that's what I love about our raise website is I've done it just to prove a point. Like you guys, all the stuff is done for you. You don't even need to buy expensive ingredients and waste them. Just follow the instructions, you know? And it's funny. We've had members who have come to us and said, ever since I joined, I eat so much flavorful food now. And I was like, you were under seasoning your food, weren't you? They were like, I was, people don't even realize they're doing it. And they just eat like this nasty food. And I'm like, no, 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 no. If we've got to go free from, it's going to taste good. You know, and you use the advanced recipe search and it's like, I want people to see, Hey, look, you can't have these 17 things and you can still have blah, 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 blah. You know? And, and I think one of the greatest disservices to the free from community is just food that tastes bad because people, they think gluten-free bread is bad. No, not all gluten-free bread bread is bad. Right. Right. Not all egg-free cake is disgusting. You know, we've got an award-winning bakery that's top eight free. How? We just use the right ratios. We use the right ingredients. We use the right tools. And you end up with this cake that people actually tell us is better than the standard stuff. Hello, and it's free from everything, you know, and you can freeze it for four months. I call that a victory, you know? And that's my whole thing. Like I am here to show our community whether, and I, I love saying restricted diet, because I don't care if it's allergy, intolerance, medical condition, whatever, no matter why you are restricted, I am here to show you, you will have safe and delicious food to eat, period. You can totally be nourished. You can also have cookies and ice cream and cake and whatever, and you can win. You don't have to be miserable. You just don't. I love that. Now we've talked about this a couple of times. Tell us about your Raise membership site. 
So the membership site is super cool. It's like it's, the way I like to tell people is it's everything you wish you knew the day you were diagnosed. Okay. So there's like different sections of the website and, um, you know, we try to categorize it the way people kind of think. And so you've got recipes, there's over 550 recipes now, and there's the advanced recipe search. We have more than 85 filters. You can plug in individual allergens, food groups, um, specialty diets. It's actually the most advanced, most powerful tool anywhere online for people with food allergies, because no one else is doing what we're doing where they're combining all of these different options plus meal options. So if you need freezer friendly, budget friendly, breakfast, pasta, you know, ice cream, whatever, um, as well as, you know, what meets your needs, nobody else is doing this. Mm -hmm. And um, it's really neat because if you've got multiple people in the same household and you need to just cook one meal, you can plug in everyone's needs in one go and then cook for the greatest common denominator, or you can do just you. And um, we now have tools where you can actually do meal planning and automatic grocery list generation Love from that. the recipes. I know it's like so cool. So you go through, you click a few buttons and then boom, you've got your grocery list. And then you can pull it up on your smartphone, go to the grocery store and just check off the list. Like as you go I along. I exactly. love it. It's how, how much is this? So there's um, three different levels. So there's, but the two, the people at, well, there's four levels now that I think about it. Um, for people who only need recipes, like if that's the only support you need, get the recipes only membership. That's $99 a year. And it's a great option. And you get access to all the recipes that we keep adding. We add to it every month, right? Um, for silver, that's where you need more support, but um, you're not quite like platinum support level. But with silver, you're getting, and everybody has access to our safe product guides where we make all the phone calls for you. And it's, you know, foods that aren't made on shared equipment with the allergens and that sort of stuff. And um, you're getting like inspiration guides and how-to videos and just all this stuff. Like, you know, we kind of thought about it. We said, what if you got diagnosed and you actually don't know how to cook? Like you don't even know how to dice an onion. Well, we teach you how to dice an onion, how to cut up a bell pepper, how to prepare carrots, how to make, like all these things that honestly fall through the cracks. We literally tried to look for every single crack and seal up every single one. We didn't want anyone to fall through. And that's really the platform, right? Um, so there's about 550 recipes. And then on top of that, there's like another 700 resources on a huge range of topics, whether it be stuff about kids, stuff about adults, you know, complex cases. And we have our whole video library, which is really, so if you, if you want advanced bakery recipes, advanced pastry, or the video library, that's really where you join as platinum. Um, and then like cake decorating, if you're like into that sort of stuff. But most people we find they do either recipes or silver because that's where most people are, or they're just trying to feed their kid, right? Um, and they don't care about decorating cake. <laughs> they're like, I could care less about that right now. This is where I am. Uh, just just give me food. Yeah. And that's really the platform, what, you know, what it does. It meets you where you are. It says, okay, where are you today? What do you need? What's really neat is when you join, if you fill out your new member form, you get a personalized response and we point you in the right direction for everything. If you just tell us what you need, we will tell you how to find it, right? A lot of people overlook that. And then, you know, some people are like, I had no idea you were going to personally email me. I'm like, of course I'm going to email you. I want you to thrive. That's the whole point of this. It is not for you to just join and pay for something that you're not, you're like, you just don't need or you don't use. No, no, no. The whole point is to thrive. And then of course the best emails we get are when people say, Hey, I'd like to cancel because we have everything we need now. And I'm like, perfect. We did exactly what we set out to do. We helped you on the journey. We got you to the next stage and you're super comfortable with this life now and you don't need it anymore. That's awesome. You know? Yeah. That's what we're here for. We're just here to support you where you are and get you going and make sure it's delicious in the meantime, because nobody needs nasty food, you know? Amen. <laughs> Oh my gosh. This was incredible. Thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah. So great. And, um, just for you guys listening, if you want to get in touch with her, I'm going to have a bunch of links in the show notes for how you can connect with Ray's and how you connect with Kathleena. And, um, you know, you can message her and ask all of your questions. We are here for you. Yeah. I love it. I can't, now that we're besties, I can't wait to chat with you later. I know. Same. <laughs> Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. If you found this episode helpful, would you do me a favor and help others find it by leaving a review, sharing a screenshot on social media, or sharing the link with a friend? By you sharing what you've learned, others are able to find this podcast and join our community. 
Be sure to check out my website, www.roadtolivingwhole.com for over 160 delicious recipes, a variety of meal plans, and a blog packed full of even more healthy living tips. If you'd like to learn more about how to work with me as your coach, you can schedule a free consult through www.roadtolivingwhole.com backslash health dash coaching backslash. Until next time, friend. Bye.